Both are the Viero. <laughs> Let me start with a simple question. How many of you like to travel? You now go to the airport and you have your euros. You have to convert them into dollars or pounds. So you go to an exchange bureau. And what's the expression? I feel like crying. <laughs> Look at the rates you get, right? Now just imagine if you're paying 5% transaction cost on every time you travel, what does that mean? It means that for every 20 trips you make, you could have got one more trip for free if there were no charges. There's a big problem in financial services today, and it has been in the past. I'm going to talk to you about the future. Of course, I can't predict the future, otherwise I would be really rich. <laughs> well, let me talk to you about the factors that could affect the future in finance and in money. So this is the expression I have when I talk to my bank, my insurance provider, my broker. So let me ask you another question. How many of you trust your banks? <laughs> so they ask this question to a lot of people in a lot of different countries. And the trust is the lowest in European Union. Why is that? There's an example we take in, um, in finance, business, and startups. So imagine a boat full of bankers, you know, drinking their wine, enjoying themselves, and someone comes and asks them, good, you've done really well, but where are your clients? Where are your customers? In financial services, we've seen a lot of issues. We saw what 2007 brought. Welcome FinTech, or financial technology. So what is fintech? So we like buzzwords in the startup world. So if it's to do with health, we call it health tech. Media, media tech. So this is fintech, <laughs> right? So how is it different? Technology, yes, it's been in your banks. You're doing online banking, you're doing mobile banking, you're doing a lot of stuff on your phones, on your iPads. It's the difference in the way you think. I know we have a lot of issues right now with Facebook and our data, with Amazon and you know how they treat their staff, Google again with privacy. But think about these companies from Silicon Valley. Why did they start? They started because they wanted to make a difference. They wanted to solve problems. And this is a different way of thinking than just making money. Obviously, every business wants to make money. The question is how? Three things I want you to think about when you think about fintech. It's the experience and satisfaction. It's how we do stuff using automation and specialization. I'm here in Portugal. I'm spending money, not a lot. Luckily, Portugal is cheap for me. Um, <laughs> but I'm doing this on my card. I have a Revolut card, which is a fintech startup. My pounds get converted into good rates when I get euros, and I'm happy. I'm saving on that 5%, so I can come back to Portugal, right? If you think about frauds, if you think about credit card companies, they charge you 3%. You're trying to book an airline ticket, you have to pay 3% on top because you're paying by credit card. Why? Because they say, it's the credit risk, there is fraud going to happen, and all of that. But we can solve these problems today using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So this is my first trip to Portugal. If I come to Portugal and buy a Mercedes car, it should pop up as a fraud, right? My first trip to Portugal, I would typically not do that. And this can be found out by computers. I used to work for a company called Nokia. Do people remember? The phone company? <laughs> and App Store was launched, and this pretty much took away the business from us, right? Because Apple said, we're going to do something right, which is the operating system and work with others to give the experience that people want. And this is the world of APIs. APIs is complicated, but just imagine, you're on Google Maps, you're trying to go to destination, and Google says you could take an Uber or my taxi, and this is the cost. How did that happen? It's using APIs, a system talking to systems. This is what we're doing in FinTech. Let's take a step back. We've come a long way from you know, 
take my goat for your milk kind of thing, right? We're using digital currency, we're getting into crypto. The key thing here is the pace of innovation has increased quite a, quite a lot. So what we talk about today is the fourth industrial revolution, the second information technology revolution. It's a world where it's artificial intelligence, big data, internet of things, moving very, very rapidly. AI, everyone talks about it. What is it? It's computers thinking like humans. But what I want you to understand is there's a difference between what is happening today, a lot of it is machine learning, and others is artificial intelligence. So Arthur Samuels played checkers with a computer, and after eight hours, the computer beat Arthur Samuels. So the machine learned. It, think, it talked about simulations. AI is different. Facebook did a project with two robots, and these two robots found out that our way of communicating is very inefficient. So they came up with their own language. I don't want to read it. It says, balls have a ball to me, blah, blah, blah. Facebook had to stop the project. If you think about AI, there are a lot of things get, that can be done in FinTech. Chatbot, how much did I spend on restaurants in Portugal? Not a lot, but how much is it? And it can tell me. We talked about frauds and threads. I call my bank, they're like, what's your mother's maiden name? What is your pet's name? Where were you born? These things can be found out. But visual identification, uh, your fingerprints can't. And this is the next point, which we can leverage in FinTech. So AI in FinTech can do a lot and change our lives for the good. This is a point where a lot of you might be hating me. So I'm a fan of crypto. I don't believe there are any currencies. So I'm sorry for that. I hope you make a lot of money. I don't touch that. So what are the things that can change life? Imagine you're at work and your boss is saying, hey, find me that contract from ABC supplier. You go on your machine trying to find that document. You're not sure, is it the final copy? Is it the one I sent to the client, the customer, whatever? This can be changed by blockchain. One source of truth. Think about your insurance policy. If I have insurance on my mobile phone, it gets stolen in Portugal. What if I get a report from police that is automatically taken up by the system, so if, there is, if my phone is lost, if there is a police record, then pay me. So the insurance company pays me. So this is the smart contract world. Payments. So this is a diagram of payments from a US bank to a Japanese bank. A lot of intermediaries, a lot of cost. But imagine, we're in a digital world. I know your account number. Why can't I just transfer the money quickly? And crypto is helping to change that. But there's a big issue, there's a bubble. Sorry to say again, 99, 2000, and again, people might hate me for that. Um, I'm gonna skip this example, but FinTech. So any concerns with FinTech? Yes, valuation, right? A Lot of money is being thrown at FinTech, but this will sort itself out. It has happened in the past, it will happen in the future. How much innovation can happen? So I want you to remember that innovation can happen all the time. You do something, you can improve it, you can improve it again. Think about a science fiction movie where the ending is a happy ending. It's every time robots killing humans, robots fighting, we're running out of oxygen, we're going into space, our spaceship crashing. Right? It's never good. But I'm more optimistic about the future. Any of the sectors that you think about in financial services, and this can happen with you know, FinTech, an area that I work in, I have a startup, artificial intelligence, and crypto. Obrigado e boa sorte a futuro.